Alrighty. Let's get this party started. Hello everybody, I'm Coach Todd. I'm Coach Cole. For fun over there. We're back for another outfit workout. Today's workout is gonna be a 40 minute workout. Uh, we're gonna start with the strength piece. We're gonna transition into a conditioning piece. Coach Cole's gonna be using a dumbbell. I'm gonna be using a kettlebell. Uh, if you have access to both, you may want to use a dumbbell today just because we're going to be doing a lot of snatching and that sometimes with a kettlebell can bang on your wrist a lot, but that decision is up to you. Uh, this is workout number 13 of all of the 40 minute workouts that we've been posting, but this is also week two, the first workout in week two of all the athletes that are doing our 30 week challenge to start the new year. So um, congratulations, you made it through the first week, you got your first three to four workouts in, and now we're going to be hitting again in the second week. Um, for the workout, I already said you need one dumbbell or you need one, one kettlebell. Um, I feel like I say other things, but I got thrown off with that 30-day uh, challenge, so I'll just roll with it and we'll come back to it if I remember. Um, Coach School's going to be doing our warm-up for today, but before that I just want to point out one quick thing. Uh, and that's what you're going to notice that both Coach Cole and myself are not wearing any masks, but we're working out indoors. Uh, we're only doing this for the purpose of the workout. Anytime that we're indoors and we're working out or not, we're always wearing a mask. Um, we are still in the middle of the pandemic. We got to get through the winter and spring. Uh, so keeping everyone safe is a team sport. So we ask that you wear your masks all the way, all the time as well, particularly when, when you're indoors. Last thing is just, if you can go ahead, like, and subscribe this video, uh, the channel, we put up 40 minute workouts. We put up 20 minute body weight workouts and then 10 minute abs, abs, abs workouts. So there's a lot of variety that's coming at you every week. With that being said, it's time to get warmed up. Coach Cole. All right, crew. Um, first thing I want to do to get warmed up today is combine a little bit of a quad stretch with a single leg. Good morning. So, with my right hand down, my right foot's going to come into my right hand. I'm going to lean forward. Let my left knee bend a little bit. I'm right back up. We're going to try to stay on this leg for five single leg. Good morning. I'm going to that right ankle. If you're struggling with balance, put your hand on something near a wall. Now, or hop around like this. <laughs> if you find your balance, yeah. Five to get What's up? Five to side. Five each side. Switch after five. One leg is going to be noticeably easier than the other. <laughs> well, I started on my good side. Oh, me too. Ugh. That's right. If we're struggling, there's a good chance you're struggling, so we're all in good company. Once you get five each side, we're gonna have Todd struggle a little bit more with his favorite stretch. We're gonna get a nice big arm circle in for a left leg high kick towards the right hand. Opposite arm, opposite foot. Five each side, 10 total. Those look pretty good today. Oh my, I was just, I didn't want to jinx myself. But I was like, this feels pretty good today. <laughs> it's crazy that when you do things with you, you get better. Slowing it down, I think, was key. Yeah, the arm, circle, the arm circle takes a second. Not surprising. You're not good at something, slow it down until you get better at it, then you can speed it back up. Ten each side, we're gonna hit a nice quick 20 jumping jacks, feet out and in, up and around. After 20 jumping jacks, let's go hands on the floor, walk it out for a push up for five inch worms. Make sure we roll that back on up every single inch worm, please. Once we're set up after the fifth, let's find a quick 20 butt kick to kick yourself in the butt. Yeah, we're moving today. Once you hit 20, we're going to finish off with 10 air squats. Get those hips warm up a little bit, up and down. And once you get 10 in, 
shake it out really quick, grab a drink of water, grab your dumbbell or kettlebell, if you need to do so. Um, Tall run us away with the string in just a minute here. All right, so we're gonna be talking about our strength portion. This is our, this is actually our second workout for 2021. 20, Whatever year it is. Gotta get used to saying that for 2021. So uh, hopefully you hit the last one, hopefully you hit this one. The reason we did the 30 week challenge was just to give people a reason to have a goal, plan the workouts for every week, three weeks for the, the month. Because if you start the year doing fitness, you're gonna have a lot better of a chance of finishing the year doing fitness. Um, so, if you didn't, or you weren't around, or you're not on our emails or all that, uh, you can go ahead, I just challenge you to go ahead, this is workout number 13, so we have 13 40 minute workouts, so you can jump back, there's, you only need 12 uh, for the whole month, so you can try to see if you can do three different 40 minute workouts over the course of January. The workout that we're going to be doing today, it's one of my favorites, the format at least, it's going to be a 10 minute AMRAP. We're going to pick up our kettlebell. What'd you say? Not my favorite. It's not, it's not Coach Cole's. That's why I was laughing. But I, but I like a challenge. But I didn't want to call him out. Um, we're going to pick up our dumbbell or our kettlebell when we get started. And then the goal is to not put that down for 10 minutes. So the whole time we're going to be switching sides, but we're going to try to not put that weight down. And for a lot of us, that's going to be half of the challenge of the workout. Three movements we'll be putting together. First one is the dumbbell snatch. Coach Cole's hinging at the hips. You just go ahead and do a few for us. Pick up mine, that's great. Hinging at the hips, finishing locked out overhead, using that hip opening to create the power to get it overhead. After he gets done with those, he's going to be doing some windmills. So we introduced those a couple of work workouts ago. Feet are going to be about squat width. Hip is going to be going out to the side of the weight that you have, and then that free hand is going to be either chasing down your leg or then just in front. Hinging, 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 pushing those hips to the side. Do a couple if you don't mind. Um, and then coming back up. One more. Good. For some athletes, if this is super challenging to set up, you can think about turning out the foot opposite of the hand. So he is turning out his left foot a little bit, and that's just going to help some people if you have uh, great restricted mobility. Third one is going to be bringing the weight to the front rack, and now doing some front squats. So if you got a dumbbell, let's just go ahead resting one head on your shoulder, squatting all the way down, all the way up. That's great, you can go ahead and set that down. Thank you very much. If you have the kettlebell, that front rack position is gonna be, thumb is lightly here on the chest, elbows gonna be down about by the side. Still that front rack position, just a little bit of a different setup. So it's gonna be an ascending ladder. We're gonna start three, two, one, go. You're gonna do one snatch on your left hand, one windmill, one front squat, switch sides, one snatch, one windmill, one front squat. When we go back to the original side, we're gonna go for twos, twos and twos, threes and threes for 10 minutes. We're just gonna work all the way up to see how far that we can get. Yeah. So we're gonna start in about 30 seconds. We're gonna be hopping right in here. Again, I'm gonna be starting on my left side. My left side is my weaker of the two. So if I can get through that in any workout or movement, whatever we're doing, it gives me a lot more confidence on the other side, but you're welcome to start wherever. You're still gonna be doing the same amount of reps on both sides. We're gonna be going into 10 seconds. Again, it's one snatch, it's one windmill, and then it's one front squat on each side first. Three, two, one, here we go. So we got our snatch, we got our windmill, and then we got our front squat. Switching sides. Snatch, windmill, front squat. Great, now we're going to doubles. Two snatches, two windmills. The windmill is a little bit of a slower movement, especially if you're not as familiar with it. Don't feel like you need to rush it. Take your time, take your time. And then those squats. So, I mean, you got the idea now, switching sides. <clears throat> Snatching, windmills, some of us might love these movements in this format, Todd, cool, if so, put yourself, see what number you can get up to today, others for 10 minutes, it's not your 
Um, super easy for you to hang on to that weight. So we can come nice and steady, find our rest somewhere. But as long as you try not to put that weight down, that'd be a nice big win for today. That's how I would approach this workout, all right? Um, one last thing, I would honestly take some rest in that overhead position. It's a little bit stronger, allows you more room for air. This for our position is a little bit restricting, so we get the squats done, try and move on to the next side. Find your rest overhead. We're 90 seconds in. So again, with these windmills, the leg on the opposite of the side that you have the weight. If you turn it out a little bit, you turn those toes out a little bit, getting the hips to the side, 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 maybe a little bit easier for you. And again, with the windmill in particular, don't feel like you need to rush it. Especially if you're new to it, take your time, feel it out. Yeah, some of us in that windmill are gonna have a little bit of shoulder mobility, maybe some hip mobility restrictions. You don't necessarily have to reach all the way flat on the floor. If you get to about mid shin or that ankle, you feel nice and tight there, that's cool. Make sure you maintain that press up towards the sky. Looking at that belly dumbbell helps and come right back up to the top. Keep on moving up that ladder though. I'm on four, is that the What do you want to talk about? Uh, I'm on fives. But you were talking a bit, I was talking, and I was working, so that sounds about right. So if you've been doing the workouts with us for a little bit, you're definitely going to see certain movements are heavy in rotation. Certain movements are kind of medium in rotation, some are light in rotation. The snatch is definitely heavy in rotation. It's a movement, particularly with the dumbbell, that is pretty low technically when it comes to skill level, but you still want to be thinking about if it's with the dumbbell or if it's with the kettlebell, it's the hip opening. These are open, these are open hips. These are partially closed hips, which I'm just going to call closed hips. When you open them up, the power comes from here, to opening up the hips, and then it finishes with that lockout overhead. So, something to think about. Keep that arm blue from the side. Keep this arm blue as much as possible. Keep that forearm on your chest as much as possible. Or on your chest as much as possible. We are right at the halfway point. So we've held on to that dumbbell from now on. We can do it for another five minutes. Halfway, honestly, that feels pretty fast. <laughs> I'm flying, I'm having fun. If you're in the New York City area, quick reminder, classes start back up on the 9th, January 9th, if you're in the New York area. Good. All right. So again, like Coach Cool was saying, if you've been able to not put your weight down this whole time, that may be your goal the whole time, which is great. This is a format that keeps repeating this 10 minute, don't put the weight down. The movements change, but the idea is the same. So it will get easier in time, I promise. Maybe today is just your goal, just to get through. Otherwise, it might be speed. I feel like faster athletes should be able to get somewhere into the nine or tens. It's about right. I'm on six, I think. Yeah, I can just hit six, but again, I took a little break.
So we're gonna get through this 10 minute piece. We're gonna take a quick break, couple minute break. And then we have a little bit of a longer conditioning piece coming up. Under three minutes. Press like that. Our conditioning piece coming up. It's got a little bit core in it, a little bit of abs. But summer's gonna be here before you know it. And if you didn't know before, I'll tell you now. We have some pretty good 10 minute abs, abs, abs workouts. So if you have an hour and you put these two videos together, it's a pretty good workout. Where we at, coach? We are coming up right at that two minute mark. We're about past the two minutes to go. Right. Probably about one more round per arm, I would say, in those two minutes, depending on where we're at. So give yourself a goal about one round from where you are. Keep it moving. Finish it strong for this 10 minutes. 10 whole minutes under tension. If that, up, if that arm, if that dumbbell overhead is getting a little bit tired, look up at that bell and keep it where you need it to be. Don't forget to stop pressing. Try not to let that elbow bend it up. Keep it locked out and pressed up. Focus on these windmills. Under a minute. Almost there. Hang in there. Almost there. Just about 45 seconds. Oh yeah. Here we go, last 30 seconds. Let's finish this nice and strong. Right on between movements. No reason to stop now. You're at 15. Whew. See if you can get that next one. Five, four, three, get another one in. Two, and time. Whew. Sweet. Drop the weight, finally. Take it on out. You can let go. If you hold on to that dumbbell, Awesome job. Time under tension is not my strong suit. That's why these 10 minute AMRAPs I think are hard for me. Um, if you had to drop it down, that's cool too. A great goal is to be, you'll probably see a 10 minute AMRAP again. Keep it up. Take a second, we'll breathe it out. So we're going to take a second, Stop. catch your breath, grab some water. Do me a quick favor though. One, I'm just like super curious. Are you using a dumbbell or a kettlebell for this workout? So while we take a break here, you can pause this real quick, scroll down. If you can leave a comment telling us if it's a dumbbell or a kettlebell, that would be a huge favor. I would appreciate that. I'm using a dumbbell. Thank you. We got one dumbbell. I'm using a kettlebell, so it's tied. So we need you to break the tie. What's more popular, a dumbbell or a kettlebell? Well, who do you think is going to win? Good, don't tell me. No? Don't tell me. Think about it, but don't tell me. We'll see. Okay. All right. Our workout today is an ascending ladder. Um, it's actually the same format of the descending ladder we run, but we're gonna flip it around, do it the other way, work on up for today. Cool. So there are four different movements. We're gonna do each movement for thirty seconds, back to back, to back to back. We'll do that twice. Cool. One of the movements is a single arm movement, so we'll switch arms. 
Then we'll do the same thing for 40 seconds each. Then we'll hit one 50 second round and one 60 second round to finish it out on top of that pyramid ladder today, whatever you want to call it. All right, so our four movements. The first, we're going to be on the floor for donkey kicks. All right, to set up, we're going to be on our hands and knees, probably in front of our weight. I'm looking for my feet to be next to the weight on one side. Oh, that was for me? Oh, my hands and knees? Yeah, just getting on the floor. Your feet are next to the weight, your hands are out in front. Um, Todd's going to go up on his hands and feet here. All he's going to do is hop his feet nice and high up and over the bell. One, two, going back side to side. All right. He can hop those feet as high as he wants to, as high as he's able to, just like a donkey. All right. I don't know if I've ever actually seen a donkey do that, but I'm told that they do. Cartoons, they do it. Um, <laughs> sure, that's fair. They definitely do it in cartoons. If you're a little bit uh, nervous about getting all the way up and over that bell, don't freak out. You can move the bell back and just pretend it's there and just get on the case over the floor. All right. But um, if you have a nice low dumbbell, it's pretty easy hard to get over. Second movement is suitcase lunges. Todd's just gonna pick an arm. I don't care which arm he does first. He's gonna pick it up just like a suitcase, hold it at the side. He's gonna take a nice big step back, find his knee to the floor. His front shin is nice and vertical. His knee is right over that ankle joint. It's not flying out forward. He'll step back in. Other foot goes back. Same nice lunge, 30 seconds on that side. We will not switch to the dumbbell here. Let me drop that. Third movement is a hollow hold. So Todd's on the floor, on his back. He's really squeezing his lower back in the ground for these. His feet are extended out in front. His quads are squeezed. His toes are nice and pointed. His hands can be down at his hips if he needs some help out. If he's feeling really good, he can reach him up overhead. If he needs a little bit more help, he can bring his hands down to his hips and bring one knee in about like a half tuck. We'll hold that for about five seconds, then switch knees to keep it even. That's a great way to scale this hollow hold, all right? I want you to pick whatever variation you can hold for the time with that lower back on the floor. If you clear lower back, arch up. Bump it down, scale it a little bit. I care more about the position than where your hands are. All right? Fourth and final movement, mountain climbers. We're back on hands and knees. Coming up onto those feet. One knee is going to drive as far forward as it can. Hop right back down. The next is going to drive forward just like so. Switching as fast as you can go without coming down off those hands. One quick thing about mountain climbers is that Todd's shoulders are over his hands. That's super important to me. Keeps his core engaged. Thanks, Todd. You rest. Love it. Thank you. Fantastic. Donkey kicks, suitcase lunges, hollow holds, and mountain climbers. 30 seconds each. And we'll start climbing up the ladder. We'll go about 30 seconds. You can hear the wonderful sounds of New York City behind me. We'll wait till that's gone. It might stop outside, so we will see. Being firefighters. All right, 30 seconds. We're working out. Donkey kicks are first. We, <laughs> we film in Midtown, New York City, so there's always something. It's really quiet here. It's always something. Not to be confused with downtown. 15 seconds. Feet up and over that bell, that dumbbell. Don't use anything else as long as on the foot. A pillow. Todd thought that was funny. I still think it's funny. Come in for. Three, two, here we go. Hopping up and over. I'm feeling like the same thing as a dumbbell. I don't know if you have Again, if you're feeling super bouncy, bounce right back and forth. If you need a quick second to get nice and stable, that's all right. As long as you're hopping up and over, that's what I'm looking for. Just like Donkey. Just like Dominic says. 10 seconds. Five. Four, three, two, pick an arm, grab onto the weight, find me some suitcase lunges here. So let's remember that big step back. What are you looking for? You're looking for that vertical shin, driving through the heel of the foot to stand up, big step back, nice vertical shin. If you take a shallow step back, you're gonna see it's no longer vertical. It's more like 30, 45 degree angle. Pull it back, pull it back, pull it back. Vertical, jack the heel. Three, two, we're on the floor, squeezing that low back down, shoulder blades off, nice old hollow hold. Again, I don't care where your hands are, if you need to pull the knee in, you make yourself, keep that lower back floor, that's really important. 
Three that night called the distant pussy. I thought, hold on. Nothing. I got nothing. <laughs> Ten seconds. She's just super into checking you out, though. <laughs> there we go. Three, two. two. And you can put Von over. Let's take some down and find our speed in. Nice and quick. Fight today for those hands over the shoulders. Avoid coming all back and behind. Stay low. Halfway. Ten seconds. Keep going, keep going. You got 30 seconds of rest coming up after this. It's your last five. A couple more for three, two, one. All right. Quick break. Same rotation. The only thing is, is that you're going to switch which arm you're doing your uh, suitcase lunges with. 20 seconds. Donkey kicks doesn't change at all. Ten seconds, back to those donkey kicks. Hop it up and over in three, two, here we go. Get those feet moving up and over that pillow. Hey, I don't know why that's funny. I think it's funny because the idea of jumping over something is usually something that you don't want to hit. I mean, what if you don't want to step on your nice pillow? You're right. 10 seconds, keep popping. Here we go, last five. Then we're going into suitcase lunges. Switching arms, here we go. Standing on up, down that way. Lunging back. Something I want us to think about here, since we're holding something suitcase style. What is your upper back doing? Is it relaxing forward? Are we lunging like this? Try and avoid lunging like that. Let's keep those shoulders squeezed back down towards our butt. Put those shoulder blades in those back pockets. Hold that suitcase with some nice upright posture. Muscle time, I'll get out of the way. Five more seconds. Three, two, and hollow hold. Here we are. Super easy to try to hold your breath on this position, but you need to learn how to keep tension and still breathe at the same time. Particularly because these rounds only get longer. We got 40 second rounds, 50 second rounds, 60 second rounds. Too long to hold your breath. Three, two, one. Now the time is nice and quick. Flip it over. We got this and then 30 seconds of rest, and then your first 40 second round. Good. Keep going, keep going. Halfway there, less than 15 to go. Come on, you got rest coming up. Let's go, let's go, let's go. A few more seconds. Five, three, two, one. All right, 30 seconds of rest. Shake it out. We're coming up the ladder today. So now we're gonna hit our two 40 second rounds. That's a little bit more than we are working on up. Stay with us. Donkey kick's coming up. Ten seconds. Three, two, second time through, 40 seconds. The goal is to pick a pace, especially in a format where we move on up through the ladder, that we can hang on to and move through. Maybe not 100%, maybe something like 70 or 80. Bounce up over, get to the other side, do it again. Halfway. 10 seconds, keep it up. Lunges are coming up next. Four, three, two, and let's go back to that original arm. Think about those shoulders again. Take your shoulder blades, take them in your back pockets, hold them there while we step. Big step backwards. Very good. Very good. Hang on for ten. 
Elbows are coming up on the floor, squeezing, but also breathing. In four, three, two, here we are. Trying to get as little rest as you can between these two. If you need to pull that knee in, make sure you hold for about five, then switch and keep those hips working evenly for me. And while treating the legs, still too challenging to keep that lower back flat, you can go ahead and bring them both in, 90 degree angle in the back of your leg, reaching those arms forward, stomach's nice and flat. If you start to feel a second wave, go ahead and try to start alternating those legs. Three, two, one. All right, here we go, mountain climbers. Mountain climbers and 40 seconds of rest. More work, more rest. Again, get a speed that you can hang on to here as long as those shoulders stay right over those fingers, that palm. All right, moving those legs. You're halfway there. 20 seconds in, less than 20 seconds to go at this point. And then that rest is coming up. Hang in there, keep going. Keep going. 10 seconds. Hang on, four, four. Three, two, and sweep. 40 seconds off. A little bit longer to rest. Breathe in, get that right back down. All right, 20 seconds in, second 40 second round. Everything's the same except switching hands on those suitcase lunges. Ten seconds. Don't kick. Five, four, three, two. Here we are. Here we are. Last time for the forty-second round. Hopping over that pillow. Did you say pillow? Pillow. Pillow. Wow. I can't do anything right today. Keep on hopping. You're past halfway. Keep those feet moving. Oh, come on, guys. Woo. So you go, last 10 seconds. You can run this. Four, three, two. Opposite arm. I'm on my left. Shoulders nice and proud. Big step back. Think about pulling the belly button down so you get it down to the ground. Legs are straight. Squeeze your quads, port your toes. Most of us are just going to be reaching our arms forward and trying to keep breathing. 10 seconds and you made it. Five, four, three, two, put the nose over and knees are dry. Here we go, last 40 seconds with these mountain climbers. And then you got a 40 second break again. Place that air to come down to the breath of your knee. Keep those knees working. Okay, you got 20 more seconds, mountain climbers. And then you got that break coming up. Here we go, last 15. Let's bang them out, come on. 10 seconds. Three, two, one. Good. 40 seconds. We're getting there today. 50 second rounds are coming up. 50 second rounds, 60 second rounds, and we made it. 
What changes on the 50 second round, Coach? Only thing we're going to switch up since we're only doing one of each round. We're going to say goodbye to that suitcase hold. We're going to lunge with a goblet hold. Pull cool. so both hands in the belt right up here near the chest. Same nice big step back. We've got 15 seconds. Dunk kicks are coming up. Put those feet right next to that pillow. Come up and over it. 50 seconds of kicks. Three, two, one. Here we go. Again, you can bounce off your toes. You can hop over, take a breath, hop over. Whatever you can keep moving. A little bit under for you. What kind of pillow? What kind of pillow am I hopping over, coach? Is this like a couch pillow? Is it a decorative throw pillow? Decorative throw. Is this a nice hotel bed pillow? I need to know for height purposes. <laughs> 15 I seconds. I can't answer at the moment. 12 seconds. Keep kicking. Quick reminder, a couple more kicks. We're bringing that weight up in that goblet hold for our reverse lunges. Three, two, one. Here we go. Dumbbell up the chest. Same big step back. Ideally, if I was going to choose a pillow, I don't know if I go with my like least favorite pillow or your most favorite pillow. You're less likely to step on your most favorite pillow. Well, are you really wearing shoes in your house? You're not wearing shoes now, so. No, yeah, working out without shoes on is the best. I'm going to bring my pillow up here next time. Please do. Yep. 10 seconds, keep that lunge going. Make sure we step large enough, keep that front knee right over our ankle. Hollow holds coming up in five, three, two, one. Here we go. 50 seconds. Gotta breathe. Can't hold your breath. All right, hanging up. Remember, if you need to, you can bring one leg in. Three, two, one, switch. Three, two, one, switch. Three, two, one. You get the idea. Last 20 seconds. Keep squeezing. Hang in there. It's gonna happen. Hang in there. Just breathe. 10 seconds. Last five. Mountain climbers in three, two, one. Here we go. 50 seconds of mountain climbers. Worth and over. It's not the easiest 50 seconds. Let's try to keep some movement going, though. Might be feeling this in your hips or your core or both, or maybe your shoulders, but keep them over those hands. Driving those knees under 30. Just like that. Good for these mountain climbers. 50 seconds of rest. And then your last round is coming up. 60 second rounds and then you made it. 20 seconds. Keep moving. It's there. Find it. For 10. Here we go. Five, four, couple more knee drives. Three, two, and whoa. 50 seconds of rest. That's almost a full minute. We got a minute of each movement coming and then we're done. Last round, best round. And you can lay right down that pillow after. Double duty today with the pillow. Whew. 60 seconds of each movement. We did it for 50. We can hang on for 10 more. Finishing strong today. Workout number four this year. We're at number four for the yeah for the 30 day challenge. All right, 10 seconds. One. Let's go. Getting ready. Last time. Last time for three, two, one. Up and over. Since we're here for a minute, think about your arms. Make sure they're locked out on the floor. We're bending those elbows. We're going to put a lot of extra tension, make it harder than it needs to be. So try and lock those elbows out. 
Focus on that kick up and over. About halfway. Another 30. You slow it down, that's cool. Just keep it moving. Make a pace. Stay there for 22. Okay, last 20 seconds. Last 20 seconds, then we're moving to the lunges. Remember, the lunges again are going to be in that goblet position. 60 seconds instead of that 50 second round. You got about 10 seconds to go. Hang on. Six, five, four, three, two. Goblet crack. Big step back. Oh, it rhymes. Sorry. <laughs> Last minute of lunges today. Again, keep those feet moving. Great time to breathe here. Breathe and step back.